And so it begins. Thanks for tuning back into my YouTube channel. I've been talking about getting my boat tour ready right before Christmas came, put out the last video about picking up my boat, and then obviously now it's home and Christmas is past. Uh, really got the, the, the time set aside to really get into this. I've been working on the garage because that's something that always has to happen every year. I need to get the garage totally organized, totally ready to go, uh, everything put, put up, everything organized and in its place so that I know where to find everything. I set aside some time on my calendar so that I could just tackle the garage and, and just get everything ready, rods, reels, lines, baits, plastics, hard baits, spinner baits, buzz baits, I mean you name it, everything, trying to get it up in order. And I actually even uh, did a little uh, remodeling so to speak in the garage i i moved i've got a workbench and i moved that around and and got it to where it's in a more functional location and so anyways was working on that and i'm finally out here in the garage getting ready to jump into the boat and begin just with prepping it for 2020 making this ranger z520l tour ready and what i mean by that is batteries the boat's totally wired. I, I ended up getting a Lowrance pre-rig in the boat. I ordered it with that. All the wires and everything's ready to go. I just need to plug and play on the Lowrance electronics. But there's all kinds of little things that need to happen as well. So uh, this is going to be part two of getting my 2020 Ranger Z520L tour ready. I really do appreciate you guys tuning into my YouTube channel and joining me through this whole boat organization, tackle organization. Oh, there's so many different things uh, that need to happen in order to get, re get it ready for the 2020 season. So here we go. We're gonna start first with the batteries. Uh, I've got some batteries, some not just any batteries. I got Cabela's X900 batteries. These batteries are near bulletproof. I mean, they're amazing. They, uh, I've got four of those that have to go in here. I use a Group 31 series. And I've got four of them that are going to go in there. I've got an interstate in there that comes with the boat, but I'm going to put my Cabela's X900 in there, cranking and then 36 volt all the way around to power my trolling motor and everything else in the boat. So here we go. There she is, Cabela's X900 battery. These guys are bad to the bone. I've fished with these over the last, I'm going to say five years, both on the Bass Elite Series and the FLW, it might be six or seven. Four year free replacement warranty, 220 minute reserve capacity rating, 1370 amp hours marine cranking amp rating, 1150 amp cold cranking amps, shock resistant. There's number one. Gonna need some tools to unbolt the battery that came with the boat and get everything rigged and ready there. I love the dependability of these batteries. I love the fact that they're totally maintenance free as well. I'm gonna need a tool bag. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull out the cranking battery. So one of the things that I like to do with my battery terminals, actually, this is something that, um, that Kevin Short kind of put me onto. I never used to do this, but it's such an important part of getting a great connection on all your terminals and stuff like that so uh, you just grab one of these guys and you can just kind of scruff up all these connections like that you can just kind of scruff them up like that just knock the shine off of them knock the smoothness off of them and get it and get that going like that the other thing that you can do that I also do that uh, Kevin Short showed me is like if I'm going to use that terminal you got that thing with the uh, Brillo in there, just get on there and just knock that shine off of that too. Maybe go both ways if you can and give it a good roughing up that it gets a good connection and then spray it with this, this kind of this red stuff. After you've scraped it and then tightened everything down and all your connectors are where you need to need them to be, 
then go ahead and spray it and it just kind of keeps the uh, corrosion, prevents the corrosions on your battery terminal. So it gets a lot of moisture back in here and you want to protect your batteries and your battery terminals with this kind of stuff. It's just a little thing that, a little added extra thing that I, um, that I do as well. This little job right here, <laughs> put a little strain on the lower back. Got to do your exercises and keep nimble on this deal. But right now all I'm doing is putting the batteries in and then I'm going to go ahead and wire everything up. Another cool thing that Ranger does is they have the schematic underneath this battery lid on how to wire everything up. So it cuts down on the confusion. I know that I'm really thankful that they have it un under there. Cranking battery in the top left hand corner. As you can see, I've got all that corrosion resistant red spray on all the terminals. I even have a piece of foam that I like to put. So this little bit of heavy duty packing foam, I shove that in there to kind of tighten up the batteries, make sure we drive all over the country and put that in there, lock everything in place, kind of keep everything um, from jostling around too much. I go ahead and put them on charge for the very first time tonight. And uh, that's stage one, rig the batteries up. It's uh, almost seven o'clock and my wife just called me and said dinner's ready. So I'm gonna shut it down for tonight, get ready, get back after it tomorrow. So I'm back out after it this morning. Today, so I got my batteries all rigged and ready and everything's secured and bolted in and all like that. And so um, in the Ranger, there's a place for a spare prop. So I'm gonna put my, it's right in front of the battery charger, kind of right where my feet are. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bolt my spare prop in there. And that way, if anything should happen, strike an object, lose an ear, those types of things that hardly ever happen, but prepared for those things. If something like that should happen, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install that prop. So basically, when you get the boat from Ranger, they go ahead and put these fuses for the power poles. They tape them to the lid, so I need to go ahead and put those in so that the power poles are in and on and operational. But the battery compartment's pretty much complete, so that's the prop holder. Basically, it's screwed in by that one piece up on top that you can hand tighten, and it goes into the marine board that's uh, that basically subfloor for the bottom there. So now I'll start to move on to the electronics. Next step are the power pole shrouds. They just go right on the side here. They just mount straight on there. And it makes it all one color, just like the power poles itself. And uh, kind of covers up all this metal. But, but you can just see how beefy the construction is on a power pole. All those arches and angles and everything just adds to the overall durability of the unit. I know that power poles is a sponsor. You know that power poles is a sponsor of mine. But I mean, I just can't, you can't deny, you can't get away from the fact that everything they make is quality. They make quality products, they're durable, reliable, just great products. Same thing on both sides, got another piece for the other side there, snaps on back here, and uh, and then same thing for the other side. I'm gonna remove this plate here so that I can put my precision sonar mount up there. Everything's just ready to go, plug and play. So now that I've plugged everything in, I am ready to mount it onto the gimbal here. So there you have it. Precision sonar mount with my Lowrance HDS Live 16 inch unit. Then I went ahead and used these E locks by Dural Safe to keep my unit from disappearing. It's ready to go. Okay, here's where we're at. I still need to mount my power pole foot switches and my hydrowave. 
right here. The Kong mount is in place. Got my troll jacket on. I've got my eliminator prop nut on. I mean, I'm, I'm moving right along. I finally shut the camera off because <laughs> I was wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling with this modification. When it comes to the very bow of my boat, I'm so particular that I have to have everything just right. We spend so much time up here, I wanna have everything just so, so that all of this becomes like second nature to me, almost, almost like, it's just like breathing. I don't even think about it, running all this. And so I, I want everything put in, their, in its proper spot. I think I got it done. So I wanna show it to you guys. I've spent way more time doing this than I should have, but basically, I made this little, there's like a little piece of marine board that I cut to fit. Then I've through bolted it to make this little, I don't know, I guess you could call it a side hack right underneath here so that my hydro wave can sit through there. Then I've passed my, my cords for my Lowrance up through there. And um, yeah, all that sits on top of my TH Marine Kong mount. It's finally done. <laughs> Clearly, I think the HydroWave makes a difference, which is why I went through all the trouble of getting it situated in a spot where it can do its job for me. And then I've got my TH Marine Grass Goat here, a prop nut, Eliminator prop nut. And then I love using this corrugated stuff here, more protected in the water than I went up to here. And I usually stop about right here but I went up to here and then I cut it. And then I realized, well, I could have just ran it all the way up because I've got more here, obviously. And I put this in here because I really like it. I love this corrugated sheathing, whatever you want to call it. I really like it because see, and it just runs into here and then it goes all goes into my troll jacket. If it's small, it can, it can bend and deploying it, it'll get, it can get pinched right on that corner. So this just adds rigidity to it. So I like to have it laying out here because if I go into really shallow water and I've got to, you know, loosen up this so that I can pull the head of my trolling motor up, then it's all ready to go. But that's kind of the bow of the boat. It's finally done. Gonna go clean up my mess now. <laughs>